WPKC. So today we'll be looking at the third short story. The name title is Getting Chased. About it. Dan, a teenage boy, is getting chased by kidnappers for what he did. He doesn't know what to do and has to somehow escape the evil lady. But Dan has to look out. There are booby traps everywhere. He might get captured. He might not. Dan caught his breath as the men ran past him. He suddenly got shock when an owl flew over his head and accidentally pushed the garbage bin. He quickly got up and ran away from the place, hoping the men didn't notice him. It was a cold, dark night. There was no moon and he had to make do with the meager amount of light given from the stars. The roads were deserted and houses were abandoned. A nice breeze flew over his head and he shivered. Dan pulled his coat more tightly over him. One of the men heard a sound a few meters away and he suddenly appeared behind a bush and caught Dan by the coat. But Dan just wriggled out of it, leaving the coat in the man's hands. Slickery was startled. Dan ran as fast as his legs would go. Sometimes he paused here and there, catching his breath. The reason, you see, a gang was trying to kidnap him and hold him for his ransom as part of what he did. It was a nice sunny day when Dan was walking down the lane. He was eating an ice cream, which nearly melted from the blazing sun. Suddenly, a little boy came from behind a building. He asked if he could have the bit of the ice cream, but Dan just threw the ice cream over his head and laughed while walking away. The little boy, you see, was one of the men's son, who was in the gang. The little boy complained of what happened. Actually, he was wearing his new coat over his shirt which I wouldn't want to wear on that particularly hot day. And Dan laughed at that and threw the ice cream over him. His shirt was really new, but the coat protected it from the ice cream. Now, the man didn't want to make a mountain out of a molehill and did the wrong move. Telling his wife, the man's wife was a stubborn person who stood no nonsense and liked to kill or maim people. When he told her what had happened, she was very angry. The wife said nobody can hurt her darling, even the teacher. The man's wife had threatened to destroy the headmaster's office if he dared to lay one hand on his son. The lady then ordered him and the gang to capture the boy and bring him alive. The little boy was like his father and pleaded not to hurt Dan, and that he was silly to wear a coat on that day. But his pleas were turned on deaf ears, and the men started placing booby traps and sent men out in different directions to catch him. Coming back to the present, Dan had half an in a stitch in his side and hid behind an isolated brick wall. He knew the men were combing the country for him, and he felt sick. Immediately, two pairs of strong hands grip on his shoulder. Dan, taken by surprise, tried to shout, but his mouth was covered by a big hand. Someone hit him on the head, and he fell to the floor, knocked down. The next thing he knew, he was on a ship. He realized this because the floor was moving. He smelled fresh air and heard the sound of water. He slowly opened his eyes. The next thing he knew, he was on a ship. He realized that because the floor was moving, he smelled flesh air and heard the sound of water. He slowly opened his eyes. Before him, a lady stood, as tall as Dan's father. She was smiling like an evil smile. Behind her, a boy appeared. A boy Dan knew well. He looked at him in surprise. Now you're stuck, you idiot, the lady smirked. Jenkins, my boy, say what do you want to say to him, and tell me what punishment he should have. She strided away into the cabin. Dan looked worried and backed away somehow or the other, even when his hands and legs were tied up. His mouth was covered with ten rolls of strong silicate. Jenkins said calmly, Actually, I was a fool to wear a coat on that day. I can help you escape, Dan. I'm sorry for you, but my father did wrong to tell mother. He walked towards Dan and pulled off the sellotape. Golly, he exclaimed, not wanting anyone to hear him. Thanks, Jenkins. Shh, he whispered. I'll tie you up again in the night. I'll come and untie you, but I have to tell my mother to give you some punishment. I'm sorry about that, though. Dan smiled and Jenkins put on the sellotape again. Just then the lady came in. Have you got a punishment to give him, Jens, dear? He asked. Yes, ma'am, a really good one, Jenkins said sarcastically. They both went into the cabin for a cup of coffee. Dan just waited, waited for the night to come. Thank you. 
Please like and share this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell button to get more notifications from PKC. We'll be uploading more videos like this throughout the week.